Hello and welcome. My name is Gavin Finlay and this is part two of a series of videos on the subject of Daniel's prophecy of the 70 weeks. The God of Israel declares that 70 weeks or 70 sevens of years are determined. That is, they are set aside or cut out of time. 70 sevens of years are laid out by a sovereign God, the God of Israel, who writes history before it occurs. The 70 sevens are biblical, that is 360 day years mark out and set the time limits on some awesome passages of history. Our scripture is found in Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Uh, this is a video presentation of the 70 Weeks Prophecy. A full and more detailed study is available at the website, endtimepilgrim.org. As we discussed in the previous video, the 70 Weeks Prophecy began with an edict to restore and build Jerusalem. Nehemiah, too, gives us the only time in which that royal authority was given for the restoration of Jerusalem as a sovereign city-state. It was given by Artaxerxes to Nehemiah, the king's cupbearer, and it was in the 20th year of Artaxerxes. The time is well established as 445 BC, and as we read Nehemiah chapter 2, we realize that he's given us the month in which he went to the king. This was the month of Nisan in the springtime. We know when that moon came through, from astronomical data so we can fix the time within a couple of days for the beginning of Daniel's prophecy of the 70 weeks. Now let us consider the terminus of the 69 weeks or 69 sevens of years and we'll be looking for an event that calls for the appearance of Messiah the Prince. The terminus of the 69 weeks prophecy calls for the appearance of Messiah the Prince and there are some who will say that the birth of Jesus uh, fulfills the prophecy but clearly his nativity cannot really in honesty um, be considered as a revelation of Messiah the Prince. Recalling now our scripture from Daniel 9.25, we read, And from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. So when sixty-nine of the seventy weeks have been fulfilled, Messiah the Prince will appear. He will emerge into holy history. Will he ride into his city in messianic style? Well, we'll have to look and see if we can see scriptural evidence of him doing that. Let's look now at another event in holy history that has been and is today being brought forward as a terminus for the 69 weeks. We're looking here at the baptism of Jesus. But let's be honest here and look at the scene. We are being asked to believe that the baptism of Jesus fulfills the prophecy of Messiah the Prince. Was Jesus presenting himself here as Messiah the Prince? Now, brothers and sisters, this is extremely important. We must rightly divide the word of truth here. And as we handle this vital prophecy of the 70 weeks, we have to understand that this is a blood covenant issue. The lives of many people hang in the balance, and our proper handling of the scriptures here is of great importance. So we ask the question again, is the baptism of Jesus a fulfillment of Messiah the Prince? Does it satisfy prophecy which calls for the appearance of Messiah the Prince? And I believe that if we are honest about this, we'd have to conclusively say that the answer is no. And why is this so important that we get this right? There are dominionist preterists and partial preterists out there, and the religious spirits pulling their strings have an agenda. And the disinformation that they are trying to feed into the church is this, that the first three and a half years of the 70th week or the final seven years of this age has already been fulfilled and it was fulfilled in the three and a half year ministry of Jesus. So what is the skullduggery involved in this partial preterism? And what is the religious spirit trying to do here? As we examine the evidence, it becomes clear what's really happening here. In the book of Revelation, chapter 17, John recounts a vision that he saw of a harlot riding a beast with ten horns. And we know that the Antichrist is not revealed until halfway through the final seven years of this age. Revelation 13 shows that he rules for those last three and a half years, not before. So who's ruling during the first half of the 70th week? It's clear that the harlot is ruling. And here in this partial preterism, she is attempting to hide that fact and to put a smoke screen over herself and to cloak herself with disinformation. So much for religious error. Let's get back into the truth of God's holy word here. And we're looking here for a fulfillment of the scripture which calls for the presentation of Messiah the Prince. And in all of the three and a half year ministry of Jesus, there was only one day in which he presented himself as Messiah the Prince. And that was 
Four days before his crucifixion, it was Palm Sunday, it was the 10th day of the Nissan moon, and the year was 32 AD. If we're going to count out 173,880 days, or 69 weeks of 360 day years from Nehemiah's edict, we're going to come to this day. And the accuracy that we're going to present in the calculations that we're going to do up ahead is two days. An accuracy of two days in 173,888 days. This is absolutely astounding ac accuracy. We're looking here at uh, something in the, in the order of 1 in 100,000 accuracy, or uh, 1 in 10 to the 5th, or 99.999% accuracy. And I promise you, when you do the calculations and see for yourself, you will be astounded. So the time span of the 69 weeks goes for 69 weeks of years, or 69 times 7, or 483 biblical years. 483 times 360 equals 173,880 days. And this is the number that Evangelical Scotland Yard Inspector Sir Robert Anderson arrived at when he cracked the case of the 70 weeks back in the 19th century. As we've discussed before, his book, The Coming Prince, is still available in good, reputable Christian bookstores. Here again is our text from Daniel 9.25, and it's being brought to us by the angel Gabriel. He's speaking to Daniel, and he is exhorting us. He says, Know and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince will be 69 sevens. So the God of Israel is presenting us with some wonderful information here. And for us, it's a very good foundation because it, uh, it lays out the 69 weeks and brings it in at Palm Sunday four days before the crucifixion. This is extremely important for us because it shows us that the 69 weeks terminated with the crucifixion of Messiah and prophecy goes on to discuss the subsequent desolations of Jerusalem. Then it opens up with the future 70th week. This is extremely important, the fact that there is a future 70th week. And remember this, this prophecy deals a knockout blow to preterism in all its forms both the full preterism, which tries to say that the 70th week of Daniel, final seven years of this age, is way back in the first century, before 70 AD, and the partial preterism, which says that half of the 70th week of Daniel, the first half of it, is back in the first century AD, in the time period of the three and a half year ministry of Jesus. The hidden plot behind all this is to clear the future of any encumbrances or concerns about any future covenant dealings that the church might need to concern herself with, particularly in relationship to Israel, that the church can basically take over the world, that there are no future dramas, there are no future covenant dealings between God and his people, and there are no future issues uh, in relationship to Israel that they need concern themselves with. So they can conveniently uh, forget Israel and thereby proceed on with their dominionist agenda. We're going to wrap up this video now. And in our next video, we'll discuss the issue of biblical time and how it was that Sir Robert Anderson was able to conclude that the 70 weeks uh, prophecy was being dispensed from the throne of God in bundles of precise 360-day years. We'll also be looking at the Hebrew calendar, which is made up of 12 months in the year, tracking through the year from new moon to new moon. And each month or each lunar cycle is approximately 29.53 days. And we'll see how biblical or prophetic time relates to this. A perfect circle. A circle is made up of 360 degrees. So we're going to arrive at this conclusion. God is laying out biblical time according to the pattern of a perfect circle. This would also describe the mechanics of a perfect solar system. A solar system in which the Earth revolved around the Sun every 360 days and the Moon revolved around the Earth every 30 days. So we'll discover that biblical time is being laid out for us in beauty and in truth according to the mathematics and geometry of a holy God. Prophetic or biblical time is also nailed down for us quite neatly in our Rosetta Stone for biblical time, which is found in Revelation chapter 12. In that chapter, the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle John, gives us the time period of the exile and nurturing of the woman, God's covenant people, during the tribulation period. And we are given the time period using two time units. And we discover that 1260 days equals 3.5 biblical years. Do the math and that takes us back to our 360 days. Once again, the material being presented on these videos on this vital subject of Daniel's prophecy of the 70 weeks is available on the website endtimepilgrim.org.